Y'all already know what's going down. Official Attitude Era podcast. Right now, we're shooting this at the Wrestling Universe. Big, 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 big shout out to our homie Jack mm -hmm. for allowing us to use this space, having the wrestling signings. Go to WrestlingUniverse.com. You can check it out, see everybody that's going to be here. And today, we are here with a legend, somebody Absolutely. I watched growing up. We all did. Big yep. part of the Attitude Era. Big part of wrestling before that. Histories, lineage, legacy <laughs> runs deep. Mm -hmm. Even right now, currently... The legend Rakishi is in the mm -hmm. building. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, Well, what an introduction, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Got you, got you. Got you. Got to, got to get flowers while people are still here to smell them. Mm -hmm. But with this podcast, so we, we interject battle rap and um and wrestling. I feel like um you know later around the time that you came into wrestling, a little bit before that, but then after even to now, they incorporate hip hop a lot because yeah. I feel like the comparisons is there. So with mm -hmm. battle rap, you know, we got good guys, we got bad guys, even though it's not. Scripted mm -hmm. a lot It is kind of Because when somebody's doing good There's no way they can lose the battle The yeah. crowd is going to cheer for them And when they got the person they don't like It doesn't matter how good the rhymes are mm -hmm. The crowd is not So have you ever watched Battle Rap before? Well I've seen a little bit on YouTube I don't really uh, remember the gentleman's name But hey, first and foremost uh, Thank you for having me on the show uh, Thank you Thank you, uh, you, man. Thank, you. you. thank you You know it's good to see young entrepreneurs Just yourself mm -hmm. uh, To be able to build your own platform to be able to bring awareness of what's happening here. Yeah. Mm. Music, to me, it's a connection for everybody in the world. Mm. But for some reason, for hip-hop, it's more so connected a lot into mm. wrestling. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, when I got the, uh, the heads up about doing this interview, I was excited. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. well, for one thing, I'm a big fan of hip-hop, mm -hmm. you know, and so forth. So I like, I like listening to a lot of freestyling. For me, like the talent is like on the pen to the paper boy, and you can come off the dome. That right there is skill. So yeah, mm -hmm. I'm a yeah. big fan. You kids continue to keep doing what you're doing. Yeah, got gotcha, you. Definitely, definitely. Yeah. So before we end, into, uh, end the interview, that's a good thing. Because in battle rap now, it's more so like boxing. It's scheduled. You get your 90 days. Right. People get paid when they lose, mm -hmm. and you got your time to rehearse. But me, being one of the battle rappers that been around for a long time, I'm from the street corner, freestyling, going off of, mm. so we're we gonna demonstrate yeah, that yeah, before yeah, we get to that. We're gonna demonstrate that before it's over. Yeah, so, yeah. now my next question for you is the attire that you was wearing. Mm. Cause even looking at the pictures over there, the jackets with Rakesh, yeah, mm -hmm. was fly. Oh. Like, he you wasn't, you wasn't coming yeah. through, like, you know what I mean, like everybody <laughs> else. Was that your idea, or was that something that WWE uh, No, well, you? that was my idea. Yeah. You know, uh, Fire. Uh, back in the day, they had fat wear. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, for me, like, as a big dude back in the day, you know, I've always wanted something, you know, you could walk into Big and Tall and find something that, you know, that to wear, like, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm urban, mm -hmm. yeah. you know what I mean, raised up in the streets of San Francisco and the county back mm -hmm. in the Bay, mm -hmm. in the swamps, in the swamp. and so for me, you know, traveling, I, I always wanted to have something that, you know, that's comfortable, but still look fly, mm -hmm. and so a lot of my outfits that Rikishi wear was, uh, was custom made. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, I was hands on with the idea and so forth, and uh, you know, till this day, you know, I I get a lot of big fans of mine. Yeah, mm -hmm. you yeah, know what I mean. They say, hey, where can we get this vibe? Where can we get blah blah blah? So we're to make it. You know, mm -hmm. got you, got you. Mm -hmm. Um, now you you entered um you was around before you know by the name Fat Two, and then you came back as Rakishi like ninety nine two thousand. Mm -hmm. But in them two years that you weren't there, like, do you have a favorite memory of the Attitude Era? Like just watching. Before you enter it? Oh man, what to me was uh, the attitude there was so crazy, man. Yeah, I mean, yeah. mm -hmm. Everything was so fast paced. It wasn't too structured. You know, we just when it was showtime for us, we just went out there and just what we call just do it on the fly. Mm -hmm. We knew what the deal was at the end of the picture, but at the end of the day it was just, you know, it was Borderline rated, rated, rated R. Yeah, yeah, yeah you know yeah. what I mean. Because to me, wrestling—that's what wrestling is. If you can't let us be who we are out there, you know, we can't really perform and bring that character to par. Mm -hmm. And when it came time for uh, the Attitude Era, and now you know, uh, that was the era that I found Rikishi. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. I love the head shrinkers. I love the SST. You know, being with family, Yoko mm -hmm. and Samu, my uncle Alpha. Mm -hmm. You know, that was good, you know what I mean? That was a time in my life and the career where you're able to be underneath the trees of those that, you know, that brought me into this business. Mm -hmm. But once that was shifted and Rikishi, you know, broke out on his single, went to Fatu, you know, did that to make a difference. You know, everything is time in professional wrestling. 
Fatu just did not stick. Ain't nobody cared about making a damn difference, especially coming out with colors like Doink. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, big shout out to Doink. Nah, yeah. shout out to Doink. Yeah. Shout out to Doink. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so come from Doink, you know, I mean, come from Rikishi to make, I mean, uh, Fatu make a difference, in comes the Sultan. A lot of people might be surprised, but for the Sultan, that was one of my favorite characters. Mm. See, I had no idea about Rikishi yet, right? Mm. And so the Sultan to me was, you know, I was blessed to have two legends to be my manager, which was, you know, Bob Backlund and, of course, the man with the most heat in the business, I think, is Iron Sheik, just naturally. Yeah. yeah. You know, and so when you're underneath the guidance of them and to be up, or, you know, from a new character from the Middle East, uh, for me it was testing my skills of my craft. Mm. Was I good enough to be able to make people believe that this cat here is from the Middle East. Mm. Mm. So I had to, you know, during our downtime with Sheik, he would take me, I never had, uh, you know, Mediterranean food, mm. Middle Eastern food. So I would go, he would teach me all, he said, this is what he had, the lamb here, this is blah, blah, blah. So I was really trying to get into it. Mm. You know, understanding, you know, what the workouts that they do with the damn clubs. We seen Sheik do that. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Man, I went to pick one of them damn clubs, but I clocked my, myself in the head and almost had a concussion the damn thing. Oh, so. <laughs> but that just goes to show you how heavy it is and how strong the Iron Sheik was. Mm. So I got deep up into this character because, for me, I had no idea where Kishi was in the back yet. Mm. I'm thinking, this is it for me. We got to make this work. And so when that went, everything is time in professional wrestling. I just signed a four-year deal for the Sultan. They squashed it in about four months. And now I'm sitting at home with three years, blah, 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 mm. left on my contract. During the time when I'm home, this is the time to where, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm you know, starting to put on some weight at home. I'm, you know, that, that normal family time now. You know, yeah. I'm not booked out anymore. They don't need me to be on the road. And so I wasn't going to call and say, yo, did y'all forget about me? Because mm -hmm. I was going to pay it anyway every week. Mm -hmm. You dig? That is business, yeah. <laughs> That's what it is. Fact, yeah, yeah. Fact, That's yeah. what it is. You ain't going to complain about it. You getting that weekly paycheck, shut your damn mouth. Mm -hmm. Just chill. Everything is timing. And so by that time, uh, my contract was almost over within that 90-day period. And I put on about, I was every bit about 425. Mm -hmm. Uh, but when they came, you know, the office came to me in uh, Memphis, Tennessee. I was actually wrestling Kurt Angle. Mm. They seen the difference of, you know, this this body here of the soldier. It used to be. He was bald head, but now he's got long hair. I let my hair grow out. But I was still moving as if I was 240 pounds yeah, at yeah, 425. Mm. And then, you know, got a call that day. You know, the man wants you to come up. We can sit down and talk, you know. Talk Scarface up there in, <laughs> you know, Stanford, Connecticut's office, and the rest was history, man. Right. And in comes Rikishi, and there it is. And, mm. and, 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 and I'm glad you said that, because that leads me to my next question. Yep. Now, I'm going to keep it a thousand. You doing the stink face was, to me, the illest, <laughs> some of the illest shit I ever seen I as a kid. Because I'm like, yo, this mm. man is that ill. They say, yo, kiss my ass. I, I want to know, right? Mm. Where did that come from, and where? What was the first time you actually used it? How was that reaction? And were there any wrestlers that, if, you know, just like nah, I can't, I can't deal with that. Nah, man. Well, if you can share that, if you can share that. No, I'm, 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 we gonna yeah. keep it one thousand. One thousand, yes. Yeah, like, so, this happened on a house show. It was on a Sunday in Mobile, Alabama, mm. and I wrestled a, a wrestler by the name of Big Boss Man. Mm. Great trailer. Nice. Right? God bless. Yeah. God bless you. And it's like, I don't know, maybe about 20,000 people sold out there. And this is the first time this character, Rikishi, comes through. Mm. Right? So we wrestling, and like, you, you guys always see, you give somebody a clothesline in the corner. And then as soon as I gave him the clothesline, I walked back to the middle of the ring. All of a sudden, this guy here has dropped. Big boss. Now, I had no idea he dropped. But I'm sitting in the middle, getting ready to turn back that way to go get him. But all I can hear was, Rikishi! Rikishi! Turn around and stick your butt in his face! <laughs> I had that southern accent. 
I'm like an old lady sometimes. Now this is where that part go. I had no idea he done fell. This is where that part, that slow movement, comes to before the snake face. Ah! Because I was okay. looking for this lady. It was an old lady. I definitely <laughs> know it was an old lady because it was an old voice. Like them old big, big mama voice. No. <laughs> you know, so I'm looking for it. And then boom, I'm looking. There's Ray Turner. Big boss man sitting in the corner. So I'm looking. I go to take the first step. Now, in this business, we work what's called a full pop. Mm -hmm. mm. I took that first step. I had no idea what I'm going to do. When I took that first step, it was like, you know, you can hear the people like the ball camp starting to rock. Mm -hmm. I took the next step. The closer I got to him, it was starting to just, you can hear mm. just the chant. Just people were like, ah, they're, they're losing their mind. Why? I don't know why they're losing their damn mind. Because mm. I had no idea. So as soon as I got to him, he said, turn around, baby. I don't know about turn around. I went to go turn around, and it was like an eruption of a volcano, man. <laughs> <laughs> and in the back of this, you know, you now listen, I'm wide, man. <laughs> you know, stink face position. You can yeah. get all you can see is you and the camera angle like this way. Yeah. All you gonna see is hands and and this like this is yeah. his leg. And all I can hear in the back of my voice is his voice. We got him now, baby. <laughs> we got him now, baby. Go ahead and stick that booty in my face. Now, I have never stuck my booty in no man's face before. <laughs> but that damn it, that day I was looking for something. Yeah. Man, I backed it up on him, man. It was the loudest pop of my career. I was on a Sunday. Come Monday, introduced to the world. Welcome to WWE Monday Night Raw. Uh, the stink face has arrived. Hey, that's great. Awesome. It is. Fire, fire, fire. Fire. You know, awesome. I still owe residuals to some old lady in Mobile, Alabama. Wherever you at, sweetheart, yeah. I'm looking for you. I'll give you some money. Now, now, are you able to touch base? If, 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 if not, it's so cool, but just... Curious, uh, some wrestlers that might have been like, nah, man, like, nah, I can't. You know what? Uh, if in any there was, they ain't never said nothing to me. Gotcha. <laughs> right. Gotcha. Ain't nobody said Because I always tell gotcha. them first, listen, I was Samoan before I was a wrestler. Mm, mm, you right. know what Samoans, you know what time and, and, and you know what? Because yeah. they the twos. That's that. Or we the one. Ah, yeah. man. Yeah. Now, you know we the one. Now, now that, that brings me into my next Why question. Why did I know that was coming? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, look, I mean, it's look, all listen, good. Listen, yeah. I'm, a, I'm personally a big fan of Come on. everybody out of the whole bloodline. Come on. Now, there's a member by the name of Sami Zayn, Honorary Oost. Is, is that, is that, is he really like. Is, is, yeah, listen, is I'm, I'm going to break it to you like please, that. Please, yeah. <laughs> See, there's something here that I really need to bring to the table. It ain't this table, though. It's not this table, okay. <laughs> It's got to be, you know, brought to the head of the table. Mm. Mm. But I want all the members in there. Because mm. when I drop this bomb here, they going to understand where Sammy Zane come from. Ooh. I'm going to leave it at that. Ooh. Ooh. You heard it here first. You heard it here first. Okay, so look, now let me ask you. Right? <laughs> yeah. Listen, listen, listen. Look at here, man. I, I, so, so let me fan you down with my camera. <laughs> <laughs> So we got it set, right? We in Hollywood. Mm -hmm. Come on. Right? Anybody packed out. We all here. Looking at the billboard. Right? We got The Rock. Mm. We got that in the table, Roman Reigns. Mm -hmm. How you calling it now? Ooh. Mm. I just gotta ask. You later. Mm. Rock, I'm a bull. Somebody gotta come up in there at the right page. Out of the table, Roman Reigns. Mm. Who walks out? Hmm. 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 Why not Paul Heyman? Mmm. Brock Lesnar? Mmm. Solo Sequoia? Mmm. Mm. I kind of see that going every which way. Right! Yeah, right! Yeah. For Hollywood, mm. I'm going to throw it out there. Whether it happens or not. Mmm. But it's got to be some type of family feud. Ooh. Yeah. And 
can always bet your money on some more dynasty. We gonna put asses in seats. Ooh, I'm sick. Because you, you know when he said that, that just made me think of like Survivor Series. Ooh, but that you, would kind of be I'm gonna be quiet. But now, now that he I'm brought that up, the, <laughs> I got fan down. Thank you. Now that, now that <laughs> he brought that up, the Rock versus Roman, that's like something a lot of people would consider a dream match. You know, something that people mm. might not think would have happened. You, Rikisha, you've been part of so many legendary matches, so many iconic moments. Is there a match out there that has oh. let's say oh oh, oh, yes. oh yeah that, okay. you got fan down for yeah, it. Yeah. Real. That's the fan that's the fan on I got fan down. Tell Sam we call him back. <laughs> <laughs> You're doing the interview, Sam. Um so is there any matches that may have like eluded you? Any like dream matches you have, a match that you didn't get to to have that you still think like you would have loved to do? You know what, you know, when you're in this industry, you always want to get a shot at that WWE heavyweight belt. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, that would have been something to, to to add towards accolades and stuff in my career. Would have been nice to held the belt at least one time or two. Mm. I thought during the Attitude Era, you know, with the I did it for the rock angle, mm -hmm. I think it could have went either way. Mm -hmm. You know, and, uh, you know, I was in... Uh, now, during that time, there was a lot of top talent to work for. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I'm going to say it here that, you know, during the time when they switched Big Kishi heel, I wasn't ready to switch heel. Mm. Mm. You what know, when you, when you find something that just stick that you've been looking for and it's there, uh, people love it. And then all of a sudden, it's switched over to, you know, so the business mind, as far as being business for the decision, was our babyface roster was stacked. Mm. He had the Rock, Stone Cold, Mick Foley, Undertaker, that, that whole crew. And, but on the heel side, was just, you know, shallow. So I thought, okay, maybe I'll shift over this side and I can get a run with these cats here, the Rock, get a run. Mm. But I wanted, like, you know, storylines amongst each. And, uh, you know, uh, down the line there, Professor Wrestling, that's what it is, you know, sometimes Timing ain't right for certain things. Mm -hmm. Decisions don't don't match up. Mm -hmm. right. You know, and I ain't gonna drop names of who it is, but we yeah. all. Yeah. For me, the fans are a lot smarter and understand what's happening in the wrestling business. Yeah. They know what they like. If they don't like it, they'll let you know. Like you guys, voices are heard a lot mm -hmm. in the offices. Mm -hmm. Trust me when I say that. You know, they listen to you, the fans, and so. Had I had somebody like, for me, I always like young writers. Because to me, young writers, they go out the box. Mm -hmm. They think out the box. They don't do, they don't come up with things that people are already calling. Mm -hmm. You see, man, and always in our industry, surprises is good. Mm -hmm. You know, so, you know, like for me, one of my, one of my favorite wrestlers, and this is for many reasons, is a guy by the name of Bray Wyatt. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the reason why it's like in professional wrestling, you know, every you, you want to kind of, you know, what makes you look different from everybody. You know, back in our day, you had like bodybuilders. I wasn't no bodybuilder. Mm -hmm. I couldn't have a damn eight pack even if I tried to start myself. Mm -hmm. But you, you, it's you're perfecting your craft, your skills, that you're so damn good you can make any character come alive. Now, when I talk about Bray Wyatt, you see the roster today. He's nowhere near as a bodybuilder. Mm. But he's a character that's almost like a real type of character what's out there. Because there's people like that out there. Mm. But his skills, his promo skills, his working skills, mm -hmm. his idea skills, how to, you know, uh, certain video clips, you know, he knows who he is out there. He knows what it takes uh, to be able to, you know, bring that entertainment to the fans. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. And so, moving forward for the future, I always feel like professional wrestlers, you know, you should have that type of open-minded uh, relationship, mm -hmm. you know, to be able to, you know, you guide how your character should be, not so much the, of the office. Mm -hmm. No, Don't leave it to a person that's just there, you know, for three months just right in an angle and he's back out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know what I mean. He don't know who you are anyway. How do we even know he care about professional wrestling? Mm -hmm. How do we even know 
he care about you? Mm. How do we even know that he knows that, you know, our body's in pain out there. We get hurt out there. We, so there's no passion or love for the industry. Guess what? You're not writing for me. Yeah. Yeah. So for Bray Wyatt, moving forward, I say this, use him as an example. Don't matter that you, if you ain't got that, that so-called marquee body. Mm. If you know how to work and you can get that and you believe in your character, Ain't nobody stopping you. All you're looking for is that opportunity. I agree. Well, yeah. speaking of speaking of skill and uh, things like that, one of my favorite moments of yours is when you were wrestling Val Venus yeah. and you jumped off the top of the cage. I was out of my mind. <laughs> I, I, I was gonna ask because because you know you're we've known you as one of the bigger guys who can move quickly yeah. and agile in the ring. How did that come to be? And even when you got thrown off a cell by Taker, how did those yeah. how did those bigger moves with you jumping off those heights come to be? Opportunity. Mm -hmm. As a kid, I, we've all watched iconic kind of Jimmy Snooker, mm -hmm. Madison Square Garden, mm -hmm. fly off that top cage. Mm -hmm. You know, I said that if I ever got the opportunity to do that <laughs> in a wrestling match, you damn sure I was. Mm -hmm. But I had no idea I was going to be like 425 pounds when that opportunity came. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so big shout out to Val Venus. Shout Ooh. out to Val Venus. Uh, the lady of the trust in the Samoan cat, that 425 pound coming up from 50 feet in the air. You know, I mean, he uh, he couldn't have said no. Mm -hmm. But, you know, he understand what the business is. Mm -hmm. You know, we got to get out there and we deliver. We mm -hmm. do what we do. And so to be able to, you know, have that opportunity to get up there and do this blast. That was that. <laughs> now we go to having the cell. I would recommend taking a bump backwards than nobody. <laughs> you, know, I, you know, just this side story damn near broke my family up because of the decision that I decided. I could have mm. said no, but that was my decision to go back. I mean, in this industry, when you get this is called opportunity, and when you look around at that squared circle, you see the Undertaker, Kurt Angles, Triple H, the Rock, who was it? Myself, Stone Cold. That's a big roster of names. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Legendary. Legendary match. Legendary. Billions of one dollars. of my favorites. Yeah. Billions of dollars in that one mm -hmm. match right there. Yeah. Right. And but at the same you watching, I said, okay, Kishi, now figure to go over on this one here. Where am I? Where am I gonna be at? Mick Foley came to mind. Every time Mick Foley got in there with big tick, there's got to be that big bump. Now who's gonna take it? Mm. So, at the end of the day, with your smarts, you're going to take the risk. You'll take the chance. God hope you stay alive and you're okay after that bump. But at the end of the day, I made the right choice for that one opportunity that came in the right time. Mm. Because 25 years, in, years later, I'm still getting paid residual checks every time they show that pay-per-view. Who's over? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so it was show, worth it. I'll show Kurt Angle winning. Yeah. I always see that bump. Me, yeah, that's a big Foley, Undertaker. So understand the business of the part of it, and you'll always understand why the way it is. Yeah. So, so he kicking can, out at the four one one. Yeah, four one one wrestle. So you know, what I mean, before we end the show. We, we told you we was going to do the demonstration. Come on, I'm excited. You know I mean, we're we going to keep our words. Come on. So, no beat, just you give the words. Rakeesh get no. done with the words. Rakeesh going to do the words. All right, come oh. on. Man. So, yeah, we, that, that's how we do it. Whatever words you come up with, they got to do with Jekyll Real no wrestling. Way. Okay. Yes. No, what? Come on, let's get back. It's the LA Spirit. 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 So I just throw out any word? Any word? Oh, to you. Oh, I got you. I'm going to do a simple beat. Okay. One, one, uh. Bloodline. Look, look, look. We're here in the store right now. I say it one time. Roman Reigns acknowledge me talking about the bloodline. You see me right here, but we can move, though. Mention the bloodline. You got to mention the Uso. Yeah. And I can keep on flowing. You said the Uso's with bars. I'm going to bring some more in. Well, we had it easy. Know the streets need me in the wrestling universe right now with Rock Keesey. Yeah, you know the people, yeah, they shook. See Keesey in the islands of dreams, the comic book. Woo I keep on going. You know that I think great. Me and my punchlines, they all gonna make a stink face. We can keep on going on me when it's all the same. I'm gonna let it ring like the W O fame. And I can keep on going right now with bars. Know me, I'm on earth, but I might leave the Mars. Huh? We had new 
shoes. See what a new do. Match your rock keys. Why my style is too cool. Woo! I can keep on going, no, I'm doing properly. We match your Scotty, then we could be too hot. Oh. We keep on going, you know we can't last. R.I.P. to the homie Grandmaster Flash. Hey. We keep on moving, you know it gotta burn. If we finish it with a move, then it gotta be the worm. Oh. Right there, mm -hmm. You know me, I'm moving first. Freestyling, shout out to Jack, the wrestling universe. Mm -hmm. We can keep on going right now, we can stop. Freestyling right off the top, y'all know it's hot. Appreciate the love, Brock Kesey, legend. Make sure y'all go get the comic book right now. Yes. TC and the Islands of Dreams. We are here, Attitude Era Podcast. The official, 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 official. official. Attitude Era Podcast. And we out. Yeah.